This is Martha Gabler. I'd like to welcome Mary Handley. We're really thrilled that she's going to be uh, talking to us. Mary Handley is an occupational therapist on the west coast of the United States in Washington State, and she works with elementary age children. So um, can you tell us now about your uh, third grader? His name is Noah, right? Yes. You're working with His now? name is Noah. Noah, yeah. Right. And could you tell right. everybody about and him, please? Sure. Um, typically in my job, I work with special education students, so they need to have a, some kind of a designation of a disability. Uh, Noah's really not eligible for special education. He, he does not have a disability. He's a typical student that does not have a disability. The handwriting habits that you see there are just really not functional. And I, I wish I would have taken a, a video of him actually copying a sentence in the beginning. Yeah. I, I didn't do that. I didn't start doing video until we started our tag sessions. Um, but every letter is started from the bottom. Oh, that's so every, bad. <laughs> yeah, every possible letter that you could start from the bottom was starting from the bottom. And I believe out of the lowercase letters, he had about five letters that he he was forming correctly. Oh, so gosh. even an S would start at the bottom and snake its way up. Um, so, so that's what we had to start out with. And the sentence that you see on the bottom is after four weeks, so essentially four hours of tag teaching, which would have included some, you know, introduction to what the tag teach even is. Um, right. And that sentence that he wrote, those little dots represent um, all of the starting points on right. his book. So in four weeks, he went from starting all the letters on the bottom to, you know, pretty much correcting that. And then Noah got sick. And we so we had a little bit of a setback. But as I was thinking about today's interview, Noah was out for pretty much four weeks because we had spring break in there as well as him being sick. Yeah. And... He did not lose the, he didn't lose what he had learned. Wow. Wow. That's a powerful my, statement. Yeah, I, I might say that he was a teensy bit rusty, uh -huh. but he, really, he didn't lose it. He, he did uh -huh. not lose those letter formations. Wow. And, I mean, I cannot tell you how significant that is to me. So Mary, we're getting some questions about exactly what you did and how you did it. So I'm wondering if you'd like to show some videos. I've edited some of the videos to be shorter. Okay, so sounds just, great. So the first one here is the tennis ball one. So this is just a timing one. So Mary throws a ball against the wall and Noah is to tag when it hits the blue piece of paper. So it's, this isn't really a tag teach. This is just him learning how to use the tagger, which is yes. great that you did that because a lot of people just hand them the clickers and off they go. This is Mary Handley and I'm with my little friend here. Noah. <laughs> and we're working on timing of the tag. Noah, what is the tag point? Ball on the blue. Ball on the blue. And Miss Mary is this good timing. So he has incredibly good timing. Yeah. Well, there is one comment I want to make, and that is that those kinds of um, exercises for students that have trouble paying attention, those are fabulous games to play 
uh, just to warm up a student for their attention. Um, and part of, you know, he's third grade little boy. So having anything that's going to help him pay attention to the kind of detail that I need him to pay attention to is going to be helpful. Yes, that's, yeah, that's great. So this next one is the Noah tagging Mary, which is another great tag teach technique that we really encourage so that the student tags the teacher first and that way the teacher knows exactly what the student is knows exactly what the student understands. So can you tag me? The tag point is touch line. I got four. Your timing is very nice. So that's a good start on, you know, the very first tag point. Right. I think that's the very first tag point that you ever used, right? Just touch the line. Yes. And I debated whether to use a dot. But since Noah is in third grade, I really didn't. I wanted a way around the dot um, so that he wouldn't get sort of dependent on that visual cue of a dot to start at the top. Right, yeah. Great. If you were a younger child, I would, I would use a dot. So this is the next step, which is the line down. And maybe before we start, you could explain the dice and why you started using the dice and what's the purpose of the dice, because that was very, very clever. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I've used the dice. Uh, so that kids don't get too many repetitions. One of the problems with um, handwriting instruction is that uh, students will get a sheet of 25 letters to make all in a row and that is terribly boring um, and they want to just get it done and so the quality deteriorates. The more they do, the worse it gets. And so the other, so I, I want to do two things with the, the dice. I make them myself. The very most I ever put on the dice is four. So there's an option of usually two, three, or four. Uh, and so they roll the dice and they'll roll whatever the target letter would be. And that's how many repetitions they do of that letter. Um, so you have two dice, one with numbers and one with letters. Right. I've used that. I started out using that with students' names. So uh, say my name. I'd have a dice that had the numbers, and I'd have capital M-A-R-Y on the sides of the dice. And if I'm a little first grader that's having trouble with my A, I might put the A twice on my dice because I've got only got four letters. I've got the room for it. And so that way, um, the, the student, it's a way of isolating the different letters of a kid's name. A lot of times we're asking for the whole name. And so that's how I started using the dice was for student, younger students and their name as a way of turning it into a game and randomizing the letters of their name so that they could focus on those isolated letters instead of the whole thing. Does that make sense? Wow, that, that's great. That's very <laughs> clever. Yeah. I knew you were yeah. using I knew you were using the numbers to control the number of times that they would write the letter. I didn't realize you had the other dice there with with the letter on it. The letters. That's great. Okay. Well, let's watch this one. This is the line down video. So it only has the dice to control the number. Four. That's four. All right. Roll again. So Noah is going to tag me. And the tag point is? Line down. Line down. Okay. 
so there's the um, the dice and my picture of that letter dice is there's a, there's a little bit of a glare on it but um, it's actually the the letters are a particular group of letters there's two groups of letters that cause kids a lot of trouble uh, the letters that start with a C stroke and those are the ones you see there the letter C O G D A and Q all those letters start with a, the same C stroke so the other thing about this dice what's happening is the student is practicing an O so he would have this picture shows he'd rolled a a three and an O he'll practice the O three times and get that practice of that C stroke for the motor practice for the motor pattern mm -hmm. and then roll it again and he's going to get another letter say the A and he's going to get that same motor pattern and so it's the motor pattern that I'm after with that group of letters and by grouping them together in similar stroke patterns that um, really helps I think with the motor memory they're also getting m more repetitions than you think um, they don't need a million repetitions of the O but if they're getting 25 repetitions of all of those letters combined they're really learning the motor pattern of that C stroke that's wonderful that's that's great and that makes complete sense to have all of them grouped like that that's wonderful we have a video that another video of the this one is more <laughs> more advanced steps so this is the learning to so do can it. I say something about this for before you yes. start yes please okay so if you look at what I've got that target there uh, Noah was starting all of those C stroke letters at the bottom and moving um, at the bottom counterclockwise counterclockwise uh, so that he's having to swirl around to get a letter if that makes sense I right so you're so working against a motor pattern that he's developed over these last three years at school uh, yeah more probably like five years they start teaching way too early except they're not really being taught are they they're just sort of copying the, the letter shape without learning how to make it properly exactly and we're going to build all of the magic C letters which are all circle letters for a while uh, we're going to not use the dice I'm just going to give you sets of five because I also want you to start making little see how I made these little um, tally marks tally marks like but up here Yes, that is how you make tally marks. Oh my gosh, and you made every single one of them from the top. Tag point is finish. Well, we're good now, don't you think? Yeah. So now this time, tag me again. We'll do three tags for me so that you can see the pad.
better. Good. All right, I think we're ready for some letters. <laughs> 